Hi, I'm Dr. Gregory Davis, gynecologist in Chico, California. Thanks for joining us. What I'd like to do is talk about heavy bleeding. If you've ever experienced heavy bleeding or irregular bleeding, then I think you'll find this very helpful information. Now, let's talk about the reasons uh, for heavy bleeding. It basically boils down to three reasons. The first is the lining inside the uterus can be too thick. So that lining that you slough when you have a period every month, it's supposed to be an appropriate thickness on a routine basis when you're healthy and everything's working normal. But when you start having extremely heavy bleeding, sometimes that lining can start to get too thick. The other thing that can happen is in some ladies, the lining is too thin. So if the lining is too thin, that means that the lining inside the uterus has gotten so thin that it's kind of gotten down to the bare blood vessels and they're just starting to really bleed heavy. The third reason is, is that there may be, there's something anatomic in the uterus that's causing that uterus to bleed. So things that are in there are going to be something like a tumor, doesn't always have to be cancer. Some of those tumors, the most common, are going to be fibroids. Or you can have a polyp. Now, how do we determine which of these three it is? Well, the easiest way to do that is to have an ultrasound. So I'm going to write it as USD stands for ultrasound. Now, if somebody's seeing you for heavy bleeding, what I would recommend is that if you can find a gynecologist that has their own ultrasound because when I do my own ultrasound I'm actually doing a vaginal ultrasound and I'm able to see the uterus, I'm able to see the lining, I'm able to measure that, see the wall of the uterus, look for fibroids, I'm then able to see if there's any tenderness so I've got all this information while I'm doing the ultrasound so not only am I making a diagnosis I'm also formulating a game plan for how we're going to manage that so getting an ultrasound is a crucial thing to do. So let's talk about what kind of things makes the lining too thick. Well, I think of your lining inside your uterus that you have every month is kind of like uh, take the room that you're in right now. And think of carpet on the walls, the floor, and the ceiling. You're supposed to have an appropriate layer of carpet so your body makes that lining thinking you're going to get pregnant every month and then your body makes this progesterone which is just kind of the glue that holds everything in place. At the end of that 14 days that your, your body's making this progesterone or this glue, if there's no signal there's a pregnancy there, then the glue's withdrawn, your body stops making that progesterone, and then all this carpet layer breaks loose and then your uterus kind of cramps and pushes it out the door and then you start all over again. So what happens is that estrogen's what makes that lining, that carpet layer, build up inside your uterus. The problem is, is that if somebody's getting too much estrogen, then they may be making a lining that's getting really thick, and especially if they also are not making progesterone, that glue, to, to withdraw that lining. Well, when does that happen? It happens on ladies who are not going through regular cycles. They're not ovulating. Now, it's interesting. You make estrogen from two sources. You make estrogen from your ovaries, which when you go through a normal ovulatory cycle, you make an appropriate amount of estrogen. But what happens is that your second backup estrogen is you make a hormone from your adrenal glands set on top of our kidneys. Your adrenal glands make a hormone that gets converted in your fatty tissues to a type of estrogen. So you have two different areas that are making estrogen. So for ladies that are heavy, they may not be ovulating, and if they're not ovulating and their ovaries are not making enough estrogen, then where are they getting that backup estrogen? Through their fatty tissues. So if somebody is quite heavy, they're making a lot of estrogen through their fatty tissues. The problem is they're not ovulating, and when they don't ovulate, they don't make progesterone. So you're making a carpet layer, but you're not making the progesterone to slough that carpet every month. So ladies that are heavy, that are having irregular cycles, and, and usually they're not ovulating, what happens to that lining? Well it starts to accumulate, it starts to build up, so they're not completely sloughing that. And so as that lining starts to build up, all of a sudden they get to the point where they're like, I've got to do something. So when we do an ultrasound and that lining is really thick, 
and I have somebody that's heavy, then what I'm going to need to do, it's a pretty straightforward thing. We're just going to need to add some progesterone. And progesterone is the hormone that makes you withdraw that lining. So we just add some progesterone and we regularly give them progesterone for 10 days every month and in the boom, they slough that and have a period. So as we give that progesterone and we slough that lining, the lining starts to get thinner. So we don't necessarily have to do a DNC for a lining that's too thick. We can treat it with progesterone. Then they come back in about three months and I do another ultrasound to see if that lining has gotten thin. Well, if it hasn't gotten thin, then we can go and we can do what we call a DNC, the dilation of the cervix and then scraping or curetting that lining from inside the uterus. So now, what about somebody who's lining when I do an ultrasound and it's super thin? Guess what? Ladies that are really, really thin that are having irregular periods and they're not ovulating, then guess what? They don't have any estrogen from their ovaries and they don't have any estrogen from their fatty tissues because they don't have any fatty tissues. So now all of a sudden, they, they're not making a lining. Their carpet inside their uterus has gotten thinner and thinner and thinner. So it's gotten so thin that they're down to the bare walls of the uterus where the blood vessels are and they just kind of keep on bleeding. So what's going to be the treatment for that person? Well, we want to build that lining up so we need some estrogen. So when I see somebody who's thin and they're having irregular cycles and the ultrasound shows this lining is thin, it's pretty simple. It's just going to give them some estrogen. And as we give them estrogen and we build that lining back up, all that carpet layer comes back, everything kind of gets balanced out, and then they're going to do okay. Certainly, we can use birth control pills on some of these people, but birth control pills can sometimes be a little problematic because what if somebody doesn't tolerate those or they get sick or have problems? So sometimes we just use straight progesterone and straight estrogen. And by the way, we're using bioidentical plant-based estrogen when we're treating that. Now, the third thing is, is that when I'm doing my ultrasound and I'm looking inside that uterus, if I see fibroids, then I try to look and see where they are in the uterus. When you look in the wall of the uterus, and I'm not an artist, so I'm just going to, but, so we've cut the uterus in half. All fibroids start in the wall of the uterus, and they can grow two directions. They can grow out or they can grow in. It's when they grow out and they're sticking out here like that, they're just kind of a nuisance, and their uterus feels a little irregular, but those are, those are really not going to be causing too many problems. When they grow to the inside, now when you're trying to make that nice layer of carpet on the inside of the uterus, it can't stick because there's this fibroid that's kind of this big beach ball that's pushing into your room, so the carpet can't stick, so it just keeps bleeding. So when I do an ultrasound and I see a fibroid that's on the inside of the uterus, well, that means we're going to have to do something. And so the, the treatment choices for that is that sometimes we can do like a fancy DNC and we can look in there and maybe scrape that off or we can do what we call an ablation. And an ablation is where we take an instrument and we basically burn off that fibroid or shave that off inside the uterus. That procedure may be successful, but it, it's probably in the range of 30 to 40 percent. Success means not having any more periods or bleeding. So it's not hugely successful, but it can be somewhat helpful. Now, if ladies have fibroids, they're having bleeding, they've finished having their children, well, obviously those are ladies that are going to go on to have a hysterectomy. So if you look at the number one reason in the United States, ladies have hysterectomies. It's because of uh, fibroids. So, as you can see, fibroids can be treated multiple different ways. The other thing is, is that polyps, polyps are interesting. They're, they're benign. They're not cancerous. They're just a nuisance. They're these little pieces of tissue that can grow inside the uterus. And you go, well, what causes that tissue? Most of the polyps come from inside where the uterus, the placenta is attached during your pregnancy. So if you can visualize your uterus, the inside of the, the room that you're in, the placenta is a big piece of tissue that attached somewhere inside that uterus. Later on in life, once that uterus is gone, I mean, once, I'm sorry, once that, uh, um, that placenta is gone, then that area where the placenta was attached 
can, for some reason, develop this little polyp. It's a little piece of tissue that's kind of sticking off or hanging down or growing up from the bottom of the uterus. And so it's kind of wedged in between, and so what happens is that it starts to rub and it starts to bleed. These are benign. They're easy to take care of at a DNC. We can scrape those off, and they're, they're easy to treat. So kind of in summary, the thing is, is that if you're having heavy bleeding, you really need to seek out a gynecologist that does their own ultrasound, that's comfortable with looking at what's going on inside your uterus. And oh, the other thing I was gonna mention is that the other benefit of having your ultrasound done by a gynecologist is that you do it on an empty bladder. You know, when you go to a, a traditional place to do the ultrasound where they, a radiology suite, they're going to have you fill your bladder until you're about to explode, and they're going to scan the outside, then they're going to have you empty your bladder, then they're going to do a vaginal ultrasound. And that's a very uncomfortable thing to do. So if you go to a gynecologist, we have you empty your bladder, and the whole thing takes five, six minutes. It's certainly more cost effective because your gynecologist is, you're not having to pay to have them read. We do the reading at the time we're doing it. And you don't have to come back for another appointment to see your physician. So it's kind of a one-stop shopping. It's certainly more cost effective. And, and time-wise, it's going to save you a lot of time. And it's easy for us to look because we're, we're doing it we're doing it live. So when I'm doing an ultrasound, I'm actually moving. And it's like I'm watching a movie. Whereas when, when you have it done by a tech, and they take pictures, you're looking at these slides. I mean, much, most of us would rather look at a movie rather than look at a slideshow. And you get a lot more information from a movie. So doing my own ultrasound gives me a whole lot more information. So if you're having heavy bleeding, you need to really see somebody to take care of that. There's lots of solutions, lots of things we can do to help you out.